set. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another night of uh, Residence Life Speaker Series. Uh, my name is Justin. I'm here with my co host, Leah Paulson. And today we have an awesome guest with us today. You may know her from season one to season three of all that, but she does way more than that. Uh, no pun intended. Um, she's a spokesperson. She does voiceovers. She has done plenty of movies, plenty of shows. We're here with Elisa Reyes, everybody. Elisa, how are you doing today? Oh, what a beautiful introduction. Thank you so much. I'm actually really good in the midst of everything that's transpiring in the world. I feel like I'm holding it down and staying grounded. How's everyone doing over in my my family's hometown, Pennsylvania? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Home state. Yes. I think everybody's doing good. I think everybody's yeah. doing good. You have any funny uh, quarantine stories for us? Um, I, I feel like, well, the first in the midst when everything transpired, I, I was like a late bloomer of looking at this one video that was about how to make your broom stand still in the middle of your kitchen. Okay. So I did that and I thought that was the coolest thing. And I realized that you can do that any moment of your life. And yeah. that was in the beginning of my quarantine. So that was embarrassing because I was actually wow. like, recording stuff about that. Um, you know, I feel like I've never cleaned so much in my life. So this is a time for me to kind of like purge, reboot, redo, re-everything. But now I've gotten to the point where I'm halfway through my to-do list. So um, I'm at that point where my poor husband had to help me actually dye my hair, but we did a decent job. So that was good. Uh, doing my own hair and nails, self-care. So, I mean, I feel like I said to him, it's like I'm back in caveman times. He goes, honey, this is not caveman times. So I was like, I know, but it just feels like it. <laughs> no, no, no. I totally understand that. I totally get that. Yeah. So you obviously have been all around the gambit. Like we were listing all of your things from besides TV shows, doing voiceovers, being a spokesperson. I think I saw that you were a spokesperson for a teeth whitening company, which is- Oh great. yes, Bright White Mini. Yes, it's like okay. a LED that- uh, you know, whitens your teeth. Um, uh, you know, I'm a jack of all trades. I've been doing this for, oh God, about 30 years. I like to call myself immortal. Oh, no. <laughs> and um, I'm originally from New York, but I reside out here in California. And from what I can tell through my window, it looks like a really pretty day. <laughs> yeah, well, it's nice for you. It was actually uh, an electric storm over here because we had one of the Philadelphia Oh, you froze a little bit, but that's okay. I'm hey, here. Can, can you hear me? Are we still here? Are we still, Everyone on? Are we still on the air? I'm here. I'm here. For some okay. reason, you have to bear with me. Where I live, a lot of people are home, so the reception's a little funky. So whether I'm on my cell phone or the computer, it's the same thing. No problem. No problem. So um, what I was saying was the electricity went off today while we were on the air. We were with one of the like legends for Philadelphia Flyers fans. His name was Brian Propp. He went to the Stanley Cup three times. He was amazing. Oh, my God. And his electricity just shut off in the middle, and he was just gone. Oh. So we had well, to have him on the on the phone. So give us your best spokesperson for this teat whitening company. Like give us your stick. Like go ahead and like if you were on the My commercial. stick? Yeah. Um I okay. Hi, I'm Elisa Reyes and you know, being an actress and always being on the go, it's beyond vital for me to have my teeth bright, white and shiny. So with the new bright white mini, but now also called In Night, you can brighten your teeth on the go anywhere. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. Dang, uh, yeah. That was really good, right? So speaking oh. of vital, since it's vital for you, vital information, all that, you have done all that. All that came was big. I was a huge fan when I was a kid. And then it went away for a couple of years. Then it came back with a brand new cast. Then it went away. And now it's back on. And you're back on the show. Yes. Full circle. It's really been a blessing. You know, I've been, I've been acting and doing many things after all that, but all that was my stomping grounds. That was my roots, my foundation. And at the end of the day for the show, which was really nostalgic and there was really nothing like it. I mean, there were shows mm -hmm. before all that, that were called, um, uh, what was it called? Roundhouse. Um, Roundhouse and stuff yeah, like that, which I was a huge that. fan, but very different, very different. Yeah. So the new cast is absolutely amazing. Shout out to all of them. And what's even more serendipitous is Brian Robbins, who is the creator, is now also the president of Nickelodeon. We wow. have, you know, the same producers, the same writers, even all the way down to the same hair and makeup people. Um, and so all the kids, they kind of are like little mini versions of all of us in our own way. I see a lot of myself and Gabrielle, and I'm sure all of my other cast members see a little bit of themselves and all of the other cast members. And working with them, I was learning about life through them. They were also teaching me about TikTok and everything else. Okay. But 
I had a blast and um, I'll be on more episodes. So definitely keep an eye out. And um, it's really been fun. Hopefully, you know, once everything can go back to normal, we'll be able to shoot more things for the fans. And what's better, what's, what's even better is being able to patch the torch down. So doing the Island Girls 25th anniversary. I saw that. A really, really emotional moment and really fun. And um, I wouldn't have had it any other way. And Island Boys, the new Island Boys, they're doing us proud. Wow, 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 wow. So out of all the skits, I mean, you've been in so many skits besides the Island Girl. I mean, yeah. I believe you're in the one skit with Keenan um, with the chocolate. I remember oh, yes. So I was one. Penny Lane. Originally, that was Angelique Bates. And then I took over and played Penny Lane. But then I also played Falafel the Genie. So basically, whenever I gave you um, an opportunity to get a wish, and I'm okay. here, you're frozen, but I'm just going to keep talking. I don't know. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good. I would go... And then your wish would yeah. clearly come out wrong for some reason. But it was like, you know, that. a little spin on I Dream a Genie. Um, I played uh, You Go Girl. Um, <laughs> I played uh, always kind of, you know, some, ha some way, shape, or form. You know, I was in a scene with Josh Server opposite of either being like um, Percy Galore when we did um, the first season where – Cold Finger, Keenan Thompson. Yes, I remember. Right? Uh huh. And it was such a big deal. I remember when I got all glammed up. I was like, "Mommy, we're gonna take a Polaroid of me in this dress and red lipstick." And I was like, 15 at 14, it was like a big deal for me. Right. I felt like I was going to prom. Right, and it was so yeah. cool because like the show was nothing like anything else that was on the show. Not only for broadcasting for kids, um, but I also think, and I think that this gets very minimized over the legacy of this show, is that you had an all-star hip hop um and pop guests that came on yeah. at the end of the show I mean that was really putting different type of music in the yeah. forefront for children who weren't hearing that type of music I mean talk to for me about sure. that like, who were some of the cool people you got to meet because they were integrated with the show yeah I mean I'm Irish Italian Dominican from New York City so and I was the only one cast that in New York so I already was going there with like R&B and hip-hop in my blood but I also love pop music and alternative music and whatnot so I had a really big palette of music, but this show in particular really specialized in up and coming new artists, but now all those artists are now so successful. We had Usher, we had Craig Mack, we had Aaliyah, God Rest Her Soul, TLC, um, God Rest Left Eye Soul, who sang the theme yeah. song, uh, Erica Badu, um, you know, uh, Montel Jordan, yeah. um, I almost said Montel Williams, <laughs> Montel Jordan. <laughs> That would have been a little awkward and for him to be on the other show. Other amazing but. acts. And so at the end of the day, uh, for me, it gave a lot of inner city kids. It gave people all over the world an opportunity, like you said, to learn about, I guess, the urban uh, community music wise. And it was awesome. Right, 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 right. It looks like you were frozen again, too. We're playing this frozen tag here. Uh, can you still hear us? It's really funky. There you are. Are you back? Okay, okay cool, 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 cool. Okay. So do you remember the theme song? Like, can you rap the theme song? Can you rap, rap Left uh, Eye's part? Yeah, like it was, um, uh, this, in, this is just an introduction before we blow your mind. The show was all of that. And yes, we knew it all the time. Yep. <laughs> yeah, of yep. course. That was such a, that was such a, like, even the theme songs for shows, like, even the spinoff with Keenan and Kel, I mean, Coolio did their, their yes. intro and it was so yes. good. Yes, it was awesome. And it was great how, you know, you kind of, we all kind of recycled, you know, the energy and the frequency of people. So right. Julio was on all that. Then he, it just made sense for him to do the theme song for Keenan and Kel. It's, it's all love. And Nickelodeon has been such a great platform for me. And so hence why a lot of the roles that I pick later on in my life, I, you know, I, I want to definitely be a role model and have a good message. I think it's really important because for me in particular, I have a newer fan base that's the generation now, but then I also have the parents that were fans of the show. So I get the best of both worlds. And I think it's been very full circle, not even for me, but just for the fans as well. Yeah, absolutely. And you do a lot of things that have good messages. I saw that you do, have done some faith-based movies. Like those are pretty cool. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, I, I have a movie that's out right now. It's called Heavenly Deposit. Check it out and check out the teaser and the trailer at heavenlydeposit.com. It got picked up by the Dove Foundation. And basically, it's just a beautiful story about a husband and a wife that's going through everyday trials and tribulations. And there was a lack of faith. But then at the end of the day, it's all about love and bringing back to faith and hope. And that is what 
the key and aspect of life is, right? Love. Yeah, faith, absolutely. Hope. So um, I play the, you know, the best friend to, to the wife of the movie. I play the role of Jenny. I play a hairdresser that's sassy and, um, and is, you know, a, a positive influence on, on the wife, who is one of the main characters of the movie. And it was a blast working with all of them. But the fact that it's also Christian-based and the mm -hmm. fact that also it has a really good stor story and moral, to me, it's for, you know, all ages. And, and I love when the whole family can sit down and watch it. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so we have somebody who's a little shy. So okay. she said, don't call her out. So we won't call her out. But she has a okay. question. And we're gonna allow Leah to ask that question. for Okay. Her. Yeah, so Brenda's got a question for you. So what was your funniest moment that happened behind the scenes of filming all that? I would if say if you can pick just one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would say probably uh, one time. Well, witnessing Chris Farley. God rest his soul, yep. who guest starred on all that. And he was in a scene with myself and Keenan Thompson. It was uh, like the Randy and Mandy sketch. Yeah, I remember, yeah. Uh, when he was auditioning, you know, to to have a new host. So it was like myself and Josh and then Chris Farley. So like I played someone that only wanted a dollop of chocolate, you know, like a little bit of chocolate, you know. And um, Chris Farley comes in and he just in one take just – takes ketchup and wants to put ketchup on everything. And it was everywhere. And I was there and it even got on me. And I was just like standing watching the scene. So witnessing that, which was a historical moment because it was a one taker and he, yeah. you just don't, that's like golden footage. But then for me on a personal level, I would say uh, there was a time Lori Beth Denberg and I and Josh Server, we were tied to the geyser in the middle of Universal Studios. Oh, the all right. Yeah, oh, I know. So I we need to bring it back. To keep it going. I yeah, know. we need to bring it back, man. I yeah. I mean, that was my backyard during our lunch breaks. I would go out for lunch and you know eat in the middle of Universal Studios and go on the Terminator ride. That was my excitement. But I just remember a couple things. We got tied to the geyser and we got slimed. And poor Josh had like bronchitis. You know what I mean? It was a long day of filming, and I was all about. I need to get out of here. I have plans to go hang out with my friends. I was like so excited because my mom was like going to go let me hang out with some kids that I met or whatever. I think I was hanging out with people from like the Mickey Mouse Club because mm. <laughs> they were shooting right, right in our same vicinity. It was during the same time frame. And um, literally the green dye from the slime would just not come out. It, it, mm. it, I looked like the Wicked Witch of the West. It was just wow. everywhere. The slime then is very different than the slime now. And I did get slimed. If people saw me on the new, all that as Mrs. Wigglebomb, where of course I was going to get slimed. It was just inevitable for me to get slimed and it was totally worth it. Two different textures. 25 right. years later, I would say the first slime in the nineties was like green dye applesauce. Like, like Gak almost. No, that was green dye and applesauce. This texture is like gacky. Ooh. Yeah, yeah that, that probably was hard. I mean, you probably had nails, hair, makeup. It was probably yeah, really hard to get out. It took like three showers, but it was totally worth it. And I have footage of me on my Instagram page where I, like it's behind the scene footage. And I'm like, Wah! like after the scene was done, like I was a kid so happy to have gotten slimed. That's awesome. <laughs> that is so yeah. awesome. So um, we know that you do voiceovers. You do voiceovers for La Cienega on The Proud Family, which is really, really cool. Um, that show went on a hiatus that also is coming back. So tell us a little bit about that. And because we have an, uh, a person who's coming on tomorrow who does uh, voiceovers full time, his name is Steve Bloom, um, and he'll be on tomorrow. So talk to us a little bit about voiceovers. Well, I just love being La Cienica Boulevard as, you know, and I just love giving Penny Proud a little bit of a hard time, but I'm not that mean to her. Um, I love the Proud family and now the new season of Proud Family would be called The Proud Family Louder and Prouder on the new Disney Plus. I don't have a release date yet, but just don't worry. We're getting everything squared away for all the fans. And, you know, even in the midst of the pandemic, you know, things are moving forward um, and, and, and it will be coming out, you know, sooner than later. And when it comes out, it's going to be totally worth the wait. I know the fans have been waiting. It's a lot different um, in the aspect where 15 years ago, when we were on the air on Disney in the mid 2000s, you know, Penny Proud and La Cienica and Dijonay and the Gross Sisters and Zoe right. and, um, you know, all of us, we weren't 
rocking cell phones and you know talking about social media. So now there'll be an introduction to some new characters. Uh, we have a great lineup of a lot of amazing celebrities that are going to come on board at a later time on the show, mixed with the fact that you know, we look a little different. So I would say maybe we're just a tinge a little older, you know, going more into like high school year, junior high school, high school year, and uh, being a little bit more independent. But that energy still of, of Sassy Lassianica is still there. And what's even amazing is we have pretty much all of the original cast members, you know, back on board. So to be able for me to have a second full circle moment, I feel immensely blessed because having all that and then having, you know, Disney, Disney Plus now, it, it's just really been a blessing. And um, these are both amazing companies to be working with. And I just feel really blessed to be a part of the Nickelodeon and Disney, Disney Plus family. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is really, really cool. So we have another question uh, from Rowan. Rowan, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, how you doing? Go ahead and ask your question. Hey. Hi, can you hear me? I can. It's so nice to meet okay. you. Yeah, I, it kind of lagged a little bit, but my question was, uh, what was the biggest lesson you've learned so far in your career? I would say definitely to just let it go, like the Frozen song, and literally have some thick skin and know this too shall pass. You know, Whether you're an actor, whether you're a writer, whether you're a chef, whether you're an accountant, it doesn't matter what you do in life. It's the same motto for me after you, you, you experience things, you just have to let it go and give it to God. There's tons of auditions I go out for and I want all the parts in the world, but I know I might only get one or two. And that is what's a part of my original blueprint in life. I feel like for me, staying grounded and really manifesting on my, my goals and my aspirations and really staying in a high vibration, especially during times like this is what really keeps me going and trucking. And because of that, I feel like the minute you eradicate that things that don't serve you all the way down to even like-minded situations and peoples and energies and frequencies once you let go of what you don't need you are going to create so much room for abundance to come in so right now during this quarantine I, i'm trying to really really self-reflect go through my to-do list of life check all those things that i've been praying we all been praying for this time to have to ourselves and it's yeah. unfortunate what's going on in the world but I feel for me, the reason I'm able to still work during this pandemic and, you know, pursue my career and still motivate myself to stay on top of all of my endeavors is because I'm focused, I'm grounded. And I know at the end of the day, there's still a rainbow. So you got to have hope and realize we all have a purpose. We're going to have good days. We're going to have bad days. But remember to just get up and try. And I think the most important thing is, is when you get up and when you go to bed, just be in gratitude, right? I feel like if we're in gratitude, then the door is just gonna open. So just be you, be your authentic self, do what feels right, surround yourself with who you love, and it's the law of attraction. What you put out comes back to you. Can I get an amen? Yes, we can give you an amen for that. <laughs> very nice, very nice, very nice. Thank okay, you. So, yeah, for sure, love so you, Rowan, honey. So Rowan, since you're already here, do you wanna ask your second question? Because you're already here. Yeah. Oh, uh, I was just going to ask, like, how you got your start on the show, like, you know, for people who You might... froze, so that's okay. I'll just wait a second. And thanks, everyone, for being so patient with my internet. Now you're back. Okay, can you repeat that again? Um, Like, I was just wondering how you got your shop start on the show, like, sure. how you first got on. Um, I started acting at seven years old, but I joined all that when I was around 13 years old. Um, I started at seven where my mom and I sent some really funky black and white four by sixes of me where I looked like I was going to quinceanera and I'm not even Mexican, but I'm Dominican. So I guess we can fake the funk in that. I, I was wearing like a prom dress and I was like seven years old in these pictures <laughs> and we were just hoping that an agent would bite. I got contacted, believe it or not, went into like an open call read a script at the age of seven years old for like Smucker's Jams and Jellies. She thought I did good, saw something in me. The first thing, by the grace of God, I went out for was a Honey Nut Cheerios commercial. And I booked it. And it got me into Screen Actors Guild. Now, at the same time, before I had that moment to really get the agent and all that stuff, I was doing background work. I was doing extra work. So I joined the agency 
you know, a little later, but in the beginning I was doing all these things to pay my dues. But unfortunately I would say I was lucky enough to do it as a kid. A lot of people that start a career as an adult, I know it can get a little like overwhelming and they feel like apprehensive to me. The time is now doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter. I just got lucky because I think as a kid paying your dues as a kid, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt so much a little bit, but I would rather pay my dues as an adult, you know, so I can really be aware of what I'm doing at the same time. But don't get me wrong. I knew at a young age what I wanted to do. So I was like a little adult at the same time. And for me, um, I just was in acting classes. My mom made sure that whatever my interest was, you know, my family was supportive and I was blessed with that. So if you come from a family that maybe isn't so supportive, I would sit down and have a talk with them and share your interest and what it is that you want to do. And then start looking for things locally where you live, where you can get involved, whatever that craft or talent would be for yourself. And, and I started, yeah, I started to answer your question just as a kid paying my dues. And I got lucky by the grace of God, everybody on all that came from a strong comedic background and did stand up comedy and came from boot camps. And I was a girl that booked a couple commercials, did some music videos, background work, was getting my feet wet. But when I auditioned for all that, I poured my heart and soul. And I knew if I just was given a chance and I did the work and I had a little bit of support from my family that I can get through it. Because if you just have one little iota of faith, it, it makes all the difference. The minute you lose confidence. So this is what I say. Uh oh, did we lose her? Even if things go a little awry. Does that make sense? Can you repeat that last like 10 yeah. seconds of that? So I, what I was saying was, uh, you know, even with just a little iota of faith, I'm able to just zoo that confidence. So even just, even if you fake the funk or fake it till you make it, play confident because what did I say? What you put out comes back. So if you exude that confidence, that's, that's what's going to come right back to you. You got to go in, whether it's a meeting, whether it's an interview and audition and you own the room. So already, like when I have an audition, I wake up that day as that character. I want to be called that character's name. You know, I'm a bit of a method actor at times, but it's the same thing. If you take it into life, you want something, you manifest it. Thoughts, and words are everything. Right, right, absolutely. I absolutely. You ever you ever look into uh, motivational speaking? I do motivational speaking from time to time. You think I'd be a good motivational speaker? That that last line it was like pretty motivational for me. Oh, Just that, that last line. That means a lot to me. Well, I make sure whoever's here on this thread that we all connect via social media. You know, I, I love to stay in touch with all you guys. And I actually have family in Pennsylvania. So hopefully when I come out at a later time, I can get a tour on campus and meet all of you guys. Yes, um, we need to make that happen. I, you know, sometime in your future. Yeah, we definitely when need we to can make travel. that happen. Right, <laughs> when we're not, when we're not st stuck inside. Okay, so do you have time for a quick game? Alisa? Yeah. You have time for a quick game? Yes, I do. Okay, cool. I uh, do. I'm going to challenge Leah and you, and if you want me to jump into it, I can. I'm going to give you 15 seconds. What I want you to do is name as many Nicktoon shows as you can in 15 seconds. Let me get okay. my... Okay. Um, all that, Alex Mack, Rugrats, um, Ren and Stimpy, um, 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 Clarissa Explains It All. Roundhouse, I'm just gonna throw it in there. You can't do that on television. Um, uh, Sab Sabrina the Teenage Witch? No, I don't know, maybe. Um, <laughs> That's ABC, time. Oh, uh, but it's hard because ABC is like an affiliate of Disney, so I understand. Yeah, I don't know. I think okay. I was just naming all these shows that seem so, like they're a younger demographic. <laughs> so, you got, so you got nine with your 15 okay. seconds. Okay, Leah, you're up. Oh Are my gosh, up? there's no yeah. way no. I'm gonna get. <laughs> you're on. All yeah. that. Uh, Cat dog, is that it? That is uh, a show. As told by Ginger, fairly odd parents. I don't know. I'm trying to think of other like cartoon ones that were around that time. Um, and Leah, you got four. <laughs> what, like four? <laughs> okay, you can do way better than me. Okay, you ready? Go, no, Justin. Cat. All right, all that. Keenan and Kel, uh, Calistra explains it all. Cat dog, Rugrat, SpongeBob. Um, 
um, Double Dare, Legends of the Hidden Temple, yes. Guts, yes. Um, Roundhouse. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. So that was cool. That was cool. Ro Rowan, you think you could do it? Rowan's like, I wasn't alive. <laughs> I'll try. All right, go ahead. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? I'm going to give you yeah. 15 seconds. Are you marked? Get set. Go. Um, Courage the Cowardly Dog. Uh, that's Cartoon Network, but uh, SpongeBob. Okay. Um, all that. Yes. <laughs> um, I really can't think. Of it's hard under pressure. <laughs> it is. That's why I didn't want to tell you all about it, and I didn't practice beforehand. I promise you. Wasn't I didn't either. <laughs> so next week, which is going to be really cool, and we have a question again from oh. from Brenna. Wait, go ahead. Uh oh, Rowan. Rowan, are you still there? Go ahead. What are you gonna say? Oh, I, I just thought of Arnold, but Arnold. Hey Arnold. Oh, yeah. oh, there you go. Hey Arnold. <laughs> hey Arnold. Right. Um, next week, and you can come on the show if you want to. It's cool if you want to come. Okay. We have the four Nickelodeon game hosts all on one show. So we got Ooh. Mark Summers. Okay. We have Kirk Fogg from Legends of the Hidden Temple. We have Phil. Phil Moore from Nick Arcade. Oh, I'll definitely See? hop on. See, I'll hop knows. on. She knows. She knows yeah. And then we got um, Summer Sanders from Figure It Out. Oh, I, and I was on Figure It Out, and I'm really good friends with Phil, and Mark Summers is in my documentary that, oh, I, very helped, nice. that I helped produce called The Orange Years, that's about, as is Phil, and as um, it's all about 80s and 90s Nickelodeon nostalgia, so that would be awesome. Send me the details so I can um I, put it I in definitely. my planner and then maybe if you want to cross promote it so we can get fans excited maybe you can create a flyer or something like that oh we have a flyer for them we do so maybe you could tag me and add me and then i can start promoting it so can you see my screen did my screen pop up here i'm going to oh, show great. this next week so oh. this was when my wife and i were on double dare on the like this past summer we went on and we met mark summers Oh, so and cute. We sat in the front because we were like, oh, definitely want to get pulled. Definitely want to yeah. get called. Definitely want to get called. I love it. I don't think Mark remembers, but it's okay. Uh, we won that set. We won that set um, and we got we got some cool shirts. So. Oh my God, I love it. Well, yes, I would love to. What day are you doing it next week? Um, I think it's Thursday, 4 p.m. EST. So okay. that's what, 1 p.m. your time? Okay, I'll lock it in and then just shoot me details. I yeah, love I'll shoot it to you right. At, I'll shoot it to you right after this. Okay, you know, how we're fun. So and we're so I thankful love. that you came on because we like we reached out to the entire cast and no one got back to us. So we're you like, froze. Oh. it's okay. I'm gonna wait for a second. There, you're back. You're back. Okay. Okay. Did you Say hear me? Again? I said we I, reached I, out. To I wrote like, you reached out to who? Everyone. To the entire cast of all that, like all of them. Like oh. I know Lori Beth Dimberg is doing like a um. Nostalgia Incorporated with like uh, Danny Tamborelli from PCP right. and some other well, things. Well, you know, everyone, 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 you know, some people, I mean, look, you know, look what we all have to go through with technology. So everyone's right. in their own frequency. And I always feel like at the end of the day, who's meant to be there will be there. Right. But I'll help spread the word around. Maybe we'll have to get some other people to come play with right. you guys. All right. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. So Leah, you're going to ask Brenna's question. Yes, I would be happy to. Um, so she wanted to know whether you, you froze, like but I can probably for... hear you. So I'm just waiting. <laughs> okay, cool. She said, did you like working for Disney or Nickelodeon better? Oh, I can't compare. They are <laughs> equally the same amazing high vibration, but at the same time, it's different. You know, with Disney, I'm a cartoon and, and, and with Nickelodeon, I'm on camera and hosting and all that stuff. So I feel like at the end of the day, it's just two separate entities, but they're both amazing, do amazing things. And I have nothing but amazing things to say about them. No comparison, no competition. It's all love. Can't do Very that cool. to me. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Look, look, Brenda tried to get you too. And she told me the reason why she isn't on is because she's in a place where there's a lot of noise. So oh, she doesn't wanna, it's all good. She doesn't want to pop up. Um, so we're going to conclude um, as we try to wrap things up. But we usually allow our special guests to like take us out. So what is like the one thing that you want to say? I know you do motivational speaking. I know Rowan's getting really excited for this part. Um, we just asked for like final thoughts. Like what would you, what would you want to leave for our students? Like the nuggets? Uh, we're going to compile a video with everyone we had with all the nuggets. So um. Um, I would just say, well, really fast, you know, if, if you guys are on social media, make sure to follow me at yes. A-L-I-S-A-R-E-Y-E-S dot com. And I'll make sure to like, you know, connect with you guys already. 
And with that being said, as far as just a quick two little shout outs, shout out if you want to hear some fun music. I have a song on all digital platforms. Yes. Called, yes. Called Back and Forth. You can get on iTunes, um, you know, Apple, uh, Google, Amazon Music, all that fun stuff through TuneCore. It's a fun kind of like, you know, sexy dance track. And that's, a, then, that's a song on there, right? Sexy, sexy, a, hot? Yeah. Well, there's sexy, hot, but then there's also my new one called Back and Forth. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, and we're going to check that out. Yeah. And then later this summer, I have a feature film. I'm one of the leads. It's called Break Even. It's about four friends. We find 50 mil, we steal it, and we're on the run. So you have to watch it. And we're wow. getting chased, and we're I'm hopping on a yacht, on a boat. I did some of my own stunt work. Um, and I have a great cast of, 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 of actors that I work with. And you, Steve Gutenberg, shout out to Shane Stanley, the director. Very cool. Uh, you know, Tasia Tellis and Eric Fellows and Brent Bailey, my co-stars. And you don't want to miss it. So ending everything on a note, I would just say manifest, manifest, manifest. Right now, I feel like Mother Earth is going through a lot, and this is the time to reflect. So use this time to really reboot, redo, and recharge yourself. Remember, your thoughts are everything. What you put out comes back. And just remember to always be the light that you want to see in others. And with that being said, I love you all so much, and I send you love and light. And to be continued. To be continued. Oh, thank you so much. Lisa oh, Reyes, Reyes, everybody, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, go listen to all of her music. Definitely uh, make sure that you follow her on all the social media platforms. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we hope to have you on campus very soon. I will. I love you guys. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Yeah, thank you.